who is or has been the driver that you get the most satisfaction from racing against past or present? Uh, I, I would have to go back to uh, 78 and 79 and 1980 when I was go-kart driving. I came to Europe for the first time to compete outside Brazil as a teammate for <laughs> Fullerton, named Fullerton. He was very experienced and I enjoyed very much that driving with him because he was fast, he was consistent, he was for me a very complete driver and it was pure driving, pure racing. There wasn't any politics then, right? And no money involved either, so it was real racing and I uh, I have that as a very good memory. Terry Fillerton é o homem que Ayrton Senna poucas vezes conseguiu vencer. Rápido, preciso e principalmente experiente, Fillerton foi companheiro de equipe de Senna nos mundiais de kart de 1978, 1979 e 80. Sem recursos eletrônicos, sem telemetria e com o mesmo equipamento, o garoto paulista do Tremembé foi confrontado com altíssimo nível de pilotagem do experiente e já consagrado inglês do subúrbio de Londres. Era o choque entre dois mundos separados por um oceano de distância e sete anos de idade. Experiência contra velocidade pura, ousadia versus técnica. Eu conheci Ayrton em 1978, ou talvez em 1978. Uh, when he came over from Brazil to race with the DAP company, who I was uh, the official driver for at the time. And he came over like as a, as a paying driver. They, nobody knew how good he was or how bad he was or if he was an average driver, we didn't know anything about that. But when he tested the first few times, very soon we realized this was a very fast driver. So, uh, well, you've got to remember he was only 17 when I met him. So he was, he was really a boy, he wasn't a man. And I was mid twenties. Um, He was, uh, he was a little quiet and a little shy, but, but rather than shy, he would, you would say he was intense, he was quite intense. There was his, you know, his eyes moved quick and he was quite an intense guy. And Ayrton was naturally gifted, he had great car control, he was a naturally fast driver. Whereas I, I was fast as well, but had, you know, had, that was also tempered with the fact that I was very experienced. So I knew more about the chassis setup, I knew more about the engine setup, and I had more experience. So I kind of had an advantage, really. You used to look at my notes, you know, the, the, the notes that my mechanic would make and the notes that I would make, and I, I let him do that for a year or a year and a half. I didn't stop him doing that, but about a year and a half or two years into our relationship, or I, I said he couldn't do that anymore because he was getting too fast. <laughs> We weren't really best buddies, we weren't great friends in karting. We were teammates who raced very hard with each other. Ayrton would always have trouble being friends with someone who he was in very hard competition with. In fact, I think he would find that impossible with anybody. He could only be friends with the drivers who he felt clearly better than and was in control of the situation. Then he could be, have a friendly relationship. A handful of people, a handful of drivers I would put before Ayrton in karts, but he only did karts for a limited number of years. If he'd have stayed a professional, had gone on and done another 10 years in karting, I think pretty obviously he would have been the top, the top carter. Within two or three years of him stopping karting, he would have been the best carter. That's what I think, you know, he didn't do that, he went to cars, but I think he's been the best Formula One driver ever, the fastest, uh, most gifted Formula One driver ever. Also, I raced against Mansell and Prost and most of those people in karting. And, and Senna was, you know, Ayrton was better than any of those in karting. You know, if you compare skill levels, Ayrton with the guys we just mentioned, Ayrton's skill level was on another plane. I was on a cross-channel ferry coming from France to England, and uh, somebody in the bar mentioned that Senna was dead, you know. And what? You know, what do you mean Senna's dead? And he didn't speak very good English, the guy, he was French. 
And he said, Senna is dead, Mort, Mort you know. And you know, I couldn't believe it. I, didn't, I thought this has got to be wrong, it can't be right. So I phoned my brother from the ship. I, there was a phone on the ship. I managed to phone my brother. Um, and he, when, he answered the, uh, when he answered the phone, he was uh, like in tears. So I knew instantly there was something wrong. And then he told me that, you know, Ayrton had died and uh, he'd seen it on TV, basically. So. Did you cry or something? I felt very upset, you know, shocked and upset. I can't remember if I cried, but I was definitely upset, for sure. A lot of people were, you know. But I managed to sort of force my way past on the last lap and I won it. He was very, very upset after that race, really, really quite angry at me. And he spoke to the press afterwards and blamed me for pushing him off. And I didn't push him off, but he blamed me for pushing him off and this thing. And then the next day, by the, um, by the swimming pool in the hotel, he was sitting down quietly by himself, brooding, you know, not happy, quite, uh, quite upset about something. And I was just kind of ignoring him, messing around with my mechanic. And at, at one point when I, I wasn't looking at the and he just jumped out of his chair and pushed me into the pool. Quite aggressively, you know, and I was, I, I was clothed, I had clothes on. So and then he, he walked off. I'm not supposed to swear, can I swear? He, he walked off with a kind of a fuck you attitude, you know. So I'm in the pool doing the treading water and he's going, oh, fuck you. you know? so that was it, that was, he was obviously, that was some kind of uh, way of, of getting revenge or venting his frustration or something. That's, that's what he did. So I ended up in the pool and he seemed quite happy about it. A brother who was killed racing motorbikes. My parents would have been devastated if I'd have raced cars. And back, the, the natural time for me to go into cars would have been after I won the World Championship in 73. And around that time, Formula One was an unbelievably dangerous sport. It was the most dangerous sport in the world, bar nothing. Not even diving with sharks or anything was, you know, Formula One was really, really dangerous. So I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to risk my life. I didn't want to take those chances. And I was enjoying the karting. I loved the karting. I was a professional, traveling all over the place, having a good time. So I was having a good life and I didn't want to start risking my life with cars. And I kind of had a dream to be a professional driver one day. And that dream came true. Hi, I'm Terry Fullerton. I'm from the time in karting when it was pure racing, pure driving and no politics.